Council Member Abdel Gawad. Here. Sorry. Council Member Barber. Present. Council Member Berenzin, absent. Council Member Burke. Here. Council Member Holman. Present. Council Member Kellogg. Present. Council Member Moorhead. Present. Council Member Townsend. Present. And Mayor Turnbow. Present. Again, as uh, before we uh, stand tonight to recite the Pledge of Allegiance, we'll remember that today is the 16th anniversary of the horrible attack on our Twin Towers, our Pentagon, and uh, the folks that died in, uh, in Pennsylvania as well. Um, this day uh, is being remembered all over the country, and I wanted to offer an, another moment of silence um, uh, for uh, the, the souls lost on that fateful day. So you please rise. We'll go with, start with a moment of silence, and then we'll recite the pledge. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As is fitting, this is uh, for today. This is also um, an opportunity for us to recognize Constitution Week with a proclamation to two different chapters for the American Revolution, uh, Daughters of the American Revolution. And I would like to invite the Prairie chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution, Betty Taylor, and help me with the other names. Little Blue River, Marta DeAngelis. Uh, okay. And Vera Glenn, with the also with the uh, and Francis Teague. Okay, so I have both chapters represented here right now. Okay. So with that, both proclamations pretty much read the same, but I would like to go ahead and recite those prior to presentation. So this uh, first proclamation: Whereas the Constitution of the United States of America, the guardian of our liberties, embodies the principles of limited government and a republic dedicated to rule of law. And whereas September 17, 2017, marks the 230th anniversary of the framing of the Constitution of the United States of America by the Constitutional Convention, and whereas it is fitting and proper to accord official recognition to this magnificent document in the anniversary of its creation and to the patriotic celebrities or celebrations which will commemorate it, and whereas Public Law 915 guarantees the issuing of a proclamation each year by the President of the United States of America designating September 17 through 23 as Constitution Week. Now therefore I, Christopher P. Turnbow, Mayor of the City of Raymore, do hereby proclaim the week of September 17 through the 23rd, 2017 as Constitution Week in the City of Raymore, Missouri, and ask our citizens to reaffirm the ideals the framers of the Constitution had in 1787 by vigilantly protecting the freedoms guaranteed to us through this guardian of our liberties and witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Raymore to be affixed this 11th day of September 2017. If I could have the, um, I'll have you folks uh, with your chapter step up here first for photographs. I think I'm the only one. Do you think you're the only one here? Ben? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate you being here tonight. Thank you. Would you like to say anything? Yes. We'd like, like to thank the city of Raymore for the many years that they have done this proclamation for us, and we hope everyone will join us in being sure that our children and grandchildren learn the importance of the Constitution. And on, on behalf of Prairie Chapter, we would like to present this uh, certificate of appre appreciation. I appreciate that. Thank, Thank you, you very much. You've done this many years ago. Thank you. And now for the uh, Little Blue River Chapter, 
it's the same proclamation. I'll not read it again if that's okay. <laughs> right. We'll get a couple of photos if you okay. please step in here with me. Oops, I'm about to fall down. I'm sorry, I got you. <laughs> Thank you very much. We okay. appreciate you being here tonight. You. Would you like to say anything? No, but this is the first time I've come here and got a proclamation. Okay, all right. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Again, thank you all for being here tonight. And we'll move on to personal appearances. Oh, thank you. We have no personal appearances, so we have staff reports. Mr. Fearborn. Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask that Mr. Cataret make the report for community development. Thank you, sir. Uh, two items this evening. First, uh, I want to announce that the uh, firehouse subs uh, have completed their work on their tenant finish there at Raybor Marketplace. And it's my understanding that they uh, do intend to open uh, sometime this week. So good news to have another restaurant in the city of Raymore. And then the second item, looking at the schedule uh, for the Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, their next meeting will be uh, Tuesday, September 19th. They have two items on their agenda. Uh, first will be a consideration of a replat of the Prairie View of the Good Ranch subdivision. And this is a uh, proposed 65 lot uh, single family subdivision. Um, uh, south of Stonegate, so it's on the south side of Hubach Hill Road where uh, North Cass Parkway meets up to Hubach Hill Road. And uh, the proposed replat, they're simply realigning or adding a couple of lots to the original plat. So we're still deal dealing with uh, lot sizes very comparable with Stonegate, uh, but they had some very oversized lots that they wanted to split and create a couple of additional uh, building lots. So that does require a, a replat. And then the uh, second item on the agenda is a, a scheduled public hearing for consideration from the commission on the uh, 2018 to 2022 capital improvement program where uh, city manager Jim Fearborn will be uh, presenting that uh, program uh, for consideration by the commission at a public hearing. So th those are the items uh, currently scheduled in front of the commission. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any questions of staff? Mr. Holman. Mr. Cataretta, is Qdoba open yet for general business? They are open. Uh, they do a very quiet opening. <laughs> they did, certainly. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Jim. Mr. Fearborn. Thank you, Mr. Cataret. I would ask Chief Zimmerman to make a report for police emergency management. Thank you, Mr. Fearborn. Um, I'm actually presenting for emergency management tonight. Mr. Murdoch could not be here, uh, but we felt it was timely uh, to come before the council uh, to talk about September being National Preparedness Month. Um, and especially with the events that are happening in both Texas and Florida, um, it is uh, entirely appropriate uh, to let our citizens know uh, about how they can personally prepare for emergencies such as this. Um, Ryan and our uh, um, CERT volunteers are going to be out at the fall festival and uh, the most important message um, with personal preparedness that they're going to be bringing forward at the fall festival um, are go bags and you all have probably heard um, if you're familiar uh, with CERT and the CERT team uh, or personal preparedness um, how important that is uh, to put together an emergency kit and emergency plan so that your fa should your family need to evacuate, uh, you would be prepared to do that. So putting together um, a simple emergency kit with water, medicine, batteries, chargers, a uh, small quantity of food and change of clothes can be um, incredibly beneficial um, if you're just leaving and able to come back um, after a, a short period of time. Um, however, the things that we've seen in both Texas um, and in Florida both um, is that emergency management are, you know, are telling folks in those areas that you, know, you may be, um, need to be prepared to be away from your residence for much, much longer than that. And, and especially in, in light of the flooding in those places, um, you may not be able to come back um, to your residence and, and have any expectation of your belongings um, not being destroyed there. But uh, uh, the importance of, of preparing uh, a go bag for your family uh, is for that 48 to 72 hours that you might need to self-sustain 
uh, until you could make it to a shelter. Um, so as I mentioned, um, what Ryan and uh, his CERT folks are going to be doing at the fall festival um, is they're going to be showing uh, the people in our community what a go bag looks like. And uh, uh, there are three levels, uh, obviously only that with the very bare minimum, uh, a go bag that would work for a family of four to for 48 uh, to 72 hours, uh, and then a go bag that has it all. And one of the things that uh, he and his folks are gonna be providing to uh, the folks they come in contact with uh, at the fall festival is a checklist. So any of those three levels of go bags, uh, Ryan will be providing that uh, to the folks that come up to uh, uh, his table at the festival to tell folks exactly what uh, they would need to have uh, in the event of any of those um, um, more minor to serious levels of emergency. Um, so he has asked that he be uh, given the opportunity to, uh, to maybe come back uh, at the next regular council meeting, even though we're not ordinarily on the agenda for that one, and just report back um, how much um, citizen outreach he was able to do at the festival. So he's hoping to be on uh, uh, your agenda just for a couple minutes on the 25th. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Fearborn. Thank you, Chief. <clears throat> next week's work uh, up, 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 up. next week's work session agenda. Uh, as of this evening, there are four items on the agenda. The first item is staff would like to discuss with council a proposal that we have received from Morning View relative to their roads. So we'll be detailing what we have heard from those folks and the result of some of the, uh, the initial testing that's been done over there and just kind of updating the council on where that particular process is and, and what they're asking of you all. Um, the uh, second item that's going to be on is there are a number, uh, as we go into the fall, there are a number of appointments to our various boards and commissions that uh, the mayor will be will have on the agenda to be bringing to you all. The strategic plan, this is the date that we had indicated we would be bringing the strategic plan back for further council discussion and all of the management team will be here for that particular portion of the work session. And then of course it will be your first opportunity to discuss the budget at work session. That concludes staff reports for this evening, sir. Thank you, any questions of staff? Okay, we'll move on to the next item on our agenda then. And that would be, we don't have any committee reports, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Are two items on our consent agenda tonight. Is there a motion to dispose of the consent agenda? Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the consent agenda to include item A, city council minutes for August 28th, 2017, and item B, acceptance of excused absences. Second. Motion been made and seconded to approve the consent agenda, both items. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Motion passes unanimously, thank you. We'll move on to unfinished business now. Can I please have the second reading of Bill 3292 by title only? The second reading of Bill 3292 by title only, an ordinance of the city of Raymore, Missouri, amending the zoning map from R1, single family residential district, to R2, single and two family residential district, lots 158 through 175 in Heritage Hills subdivision, Raymore, Cass County, Missouri. Thank you, is there a motion to dispose of Bill 3292? Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3292 for the rezoning of Heritage Hills lots 158 through 175. Second. Motion been made and seconded to approve the second reading of Bill 3292. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? I have five yeses, any noes? Okay, so are your votes yes? Both yes, okay, so I have seven yeses. Motion passes unanimously, thank you. Okay, please have the second reading of Bill 3293 by title only. The second reading of Bill 3293 by title only, an ordinance of the city of Raymore, Missouri, changing the name of streets in the subdivision plat of Heritage Hills, lots 136 through 157, and in Heritage Hills, lots 158 through 175, all in Raymore, Cass County, Missouri. Thank you, is there a motion to dispose of Bill 3293? Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3293 to change the, the change of the street names for Heritage Hills subdivision. Second. Motion been made and seconded to approve the second reading of Bill 3293. Is there any further discussion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion passes unanimously, 7-0. Can I please have the second reading of Bill 3281 by title only? The second reading of Bill 3281 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, approving and authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with Amerifence Corporation and authorizing the city manager to approve change orders up to the budgeted amount. Thank you, is there a motion to dispose of Bill 3281? Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3281 for an award of contract regarding the park maintenance facility fencing. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the second reading of Bill 3281. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion passes unanimously, 7-0. Can I please have the second reading of Bill 3290 by title only. The second reading of Bill 3290 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with Or Wyatt Streetscapes for the 2017 concrete projects, city project number 17-008, in the amount of $153,058.25, and authorizing the city manager to approve change orders within established budget constraints. Thank you, is there a motion to dispose of Bill 3290? Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3290 for an award of contract for the 2017 concrete projects. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the second reading of Bill 3290. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion passes unanimously, 7-0, thank you. Could I please have the second reading of Bill 3291 by title only? The second reading of Bill 3291 by title only an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with Gridiron Construction, LLC, for the stormwater improvement projects, city project number 17-278-201, in the amount of $59,976.80, and authorizing the city manager to approve change orders within established budget constraints. Thank you, is there a motion to dispose of Bill 3291? Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3291 for an award of contract for stormwater improvements. The motion has been made and seconded to approve the second reading of Bill 3291. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion passes unanimously, 7-0. Can I please have the second reading of Bill 3294 by title only? The second reading of Bill 3294 by title only an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, amending the fiscal year 2017 operating budget. Thank you, is there a motion to dispose of Bill 3294? Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3294 for a budget amendment for the Municipal Court and Administration personnel. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the second reading of Bill 3294. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion passes unanimously, 7-0. And we move on to new business now. Could I please have the first reading of Bill 3295 by title only? The first reading of Bill 3295 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with Superior Boeing Asphalt Company, LLC, for the 155th Street Reconstruction Project, City Project Number 17-260-201 in the amount of $367,530 and authorizing the city manager to approve change orders within established budget constraints. Thank you, is there a staff report? Thank you, sir. I would ask Mr. Kraft to make a staff report for this agenda item. Thank you, Mr. Fearborn, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, what you are asked to consider this evening is the first of three contracts for the first of three phases associated with the reconstruction of 155th Street. Uh, phase one is uh, the reconstruction of Kentucky, uh, 155th Street from Kentucky to Madison. What we are referring to as phase two is the bridge replacement. And then phase three is uh, improvements to Madison Street, or improvements uh, to 155th Street from Madison to Kurzweil. Um, this, I wanna go over a little bit about the scope of work of this, this project because there's been a few questions that have, have come up. 
Uh, what we are going to be doing is in areas where the pavement has failed, there's quite a few areas where it's alligatored and pumped up, we are gonna be doing uh, full depth patching. What that involves is removal of the existing asphalt surface, uh, removal of soft material, replacing that with granular material and placing an asphalt patch over the top of that. Uh, we'll also be doing some culvert replacements and some ditch work to improve the drainage. Uh, following that, uh, there will be an asphalt leveling course that will, the only, the best way I can explain that is if any one of you have ever put tile up, you know, the thin set to kind of fill in the low spots in the sheetrock so you have a smooth surface. That's what we'll be doing there. It's a, the, you'll see it, it'll, it'll be um, kind of spotty where it goes in, but it fills in the low areas. We will then be placing a new three inch asphalt uh, surface. Uh, we were surprised to find when we took uh, corings out there that the existing asphalt's actually eight inches thick. So when it's all said and done, um, we'll, this road will have a pavement section comparable to 58 Highway or any of our other uh, major, major collector roads. Uh, the bridge is under design. We do anticipate bidding that in November and then following the installation of that, because we need to match up to the, the approaches for the bridge, uh, we anticipate uh, bidding the final th or phase three of the project in the summer of 2018. So we do, in, do recommend award of this contract to uh, Superior Bowen Asphalt. Thank you. Is there, yes, sir. Mr. Holmwood. Uh, Mr. Kress, uh, I'm, I'm not sure I glean this out of this. Our budgeted amount was 700,000. The award of 630 or 367, is that just, is that budget amount just for phase one or does that include all three phases? That is just for phase one. Okay, so, we, and, and we do have each phase budgeted separately. The, the total budget for the project is actually a million four. Our 700,000 has been combined with uh, the Kansas City amount. Uh, this amount comes out of the million four and then the remainder is, is there for the bridge work and the work then to extend to Kurzweil. Uh, we feel that we're gonna be uh, right on budget for this one. Okay, and uh, I'm so excited to hear about the bridge construction. With that being bid out next month, is that anticipated that they will actually start work this calendar year, or would that be in the spring? And with us waiting for phase three for the third phase, if the bridge is put in, do we anticipate opening up that road a little bit for use before third phase? Or are we gonna maintain it as closed to flow through traffic until the third phase is done? Um, just, just to clarify, we, had, we anticipate advertising for bid in November. That means council would be considering a contract in December. Um, some work may start this winter uh, they have to drive some piles for the foundation, depending on whether they may be able to uh, pour the abutments. But the, there's some long lead items, the, the concrete beams and such uh, are some long lead items. I would anticipate it'll be spring before the bridge is op open. We will then open the road. We will ramp up to, if there's any elevation changes, we'll put a temporary ramp up from existing pavement surface and we then can open the bridge to traffic. We would absolutely, and as you can see from this year's uh, street work, uh, we tend to start street work mid-August, uh, first couple of weeks of August, if we're lucky, into the September time frame. So that the 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 area from Madison to Kerswell would be being done next year about this time. We'd bid it out right after the bridge work was done. But in the meantime, we anticipate that road being open for use. Mr. Kellogg. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have to ask this question, but I know staff has done their due diligence on it. Uh, projecting starting construction around August, September, that coincides with school. It is, and I, I, it's been a long time since I've lived over in that area and used that route and know the patterns. Uh, is that part of 155th, any part of a, of a, like a major bus route that the schools would need to, to work around? You know, I, we've got plenty of time. I, I know nothing is, is unsurmountable. We've got plenty enough time right now to put them on notice. That way we can work through those, those things. That, 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 that's my concern. 
we work very, very closely with the school district on any sort of a project like this. Uh, an example, bringing it down to a smaller level, is Creekmore Drive is being done this week. As a matter of fact, you have to work really closely with the post office, you have to work with the school districts, you have to work with um, uh, trash company, thank you, Mr. Crass. Uh, <laughs> you, have to, you have to work with a whole bunch of people to get something like that scheduled, and then sometimes you forget about garage sales. So, <laughs> by the way, that was a confession. That, that, that's how we do that. <laughs> Mr. Barber. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I got a comment and a question. Uh, comment is, thank you for explaining uh, more detail about what we're doing here. I did have a question when a uh, constituent uh, read the packet and saw the patch uh, and wanted to make sure that that was more than just the patch and um, you did a much better job explaining that than I did, so thank you. Second is a question on the bridge. We have a bridge now that's behind the dam there in Creekmore. Would I, would I assume that this new bridge for 155th would be similar to that, um, a wider bridge or uh, we can have two-lane traffic. The uh, the bridge the bridge that uh, is by the dam is actually a box culvert. This is actually going to be a a bridge. It will be a smaller version of what you see over the interstate, but it's actually a a, a bridge. And uh, we are, if budget allows, uh, going to be able to accommodate. We are going to build it. First choice is to build it wide enough so that we can widen the road at some point in the future. Uh, second choice will be to at least make the abutments wider because it's going to have a precast deck on it. So you can always come back, add beams, and then add add the panels, and then surface surface over the top of it. So we will be accommodating future expansion in one way or the other for the bridge. Okay, thank you. Anyone else, Mr. Holman? Mr. Kress, um, just to check for understanding, if I'm wrong at any point, please correct me, but we went out and got a project connected to but outside of our city because our citizens use it and it's a great value to them. And through some creative thinking of staff, eventually that north half of that road's gonna become ours. Is that a correct statement? That is correct. In fact, it, I just got the descriptions for that and some other things from Kansas City. So they have, they are moving forward with that and that, that the mechanics of that is currently under review. And, and we could just go in and lay asphalt and put the bridge in and just make it work like Kansas City tried two times before that bridge has been closed. But you were going in and fixing the foundation and doing that deep patching. We're gonna treat this like this is our first house and we're gonna take good care of it for our citizens. Is that a correct statement? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Anything else, Mr. Fearborn? That includes staff reports, sir. Okay, uh, therefore, uh, I'll entertain a motion for disposal of Bill 3295. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3295 for an award of contract for the 155th Street reconstruction. Second. Motion been made and seconded to approve the first reading of Bill 3295. Any further discussion? Yes, Mr. Burke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. One of the things I saw in the, uh, in the contract that I liked, uh, I had a constituent ask me yesterday, so how long is this gonna take? And uh, when I read the contract, I saw that it said a maximum of 60 days, and I was pleased to see that because that means phase one's got a time frame, and then we can get moving on to phase two and phase three, and that's that's well done. Thank you. Anyone else? There's no further discussion. All those in favor of the motion? Motion carries 7-0. Thank you. Okay, please have the first reading of Bill 3297 by title only. The first reading of Bill 3297 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, authorizing the City Manager to enter into a contract with Hedinger Excavating, LLC, for the Silver Top Sanitary Sewer Project, City Project Number 17-274-201, in the amount of $62,952, and authorizing the City Manager to approve change orders within established budget constraints. Thank you. Is there a staff report? Thank you, sir. I'd ask Mr. Kraft to make a staff report on this agenda item. Thank you, Mr. Fearborn, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, during our during some of our routine routine televising of our sanitary sewers, we discovered approximately 300 feet of sewer on Silvertop Lane. Uh, 
in the vicinity of the 200 block that had been that was failed and collapsing. Uh, this project involves uh, some manhole replacement and uh, uh, trenchlessly replacing the the failed sewer with a HDPE sewer. We do a recommend award to Hedger Excavating. Hedger Excavating most recently worked in the area on the water main project for Johnson Drive, so we do recommend award of the contract to them. Uh, the, the bid, I will, would note that the bid did come in slightly over budget. Uh, there is a companion ordinance to this following that provides the additional uh, funding for the project. Thanks, sir. Any questions of staff? Mr. Kellogg. Thank you. In the, in the agenda, it says estimated start date October 15th. Is that start date for construction or, or do we need design work that's going to start at that time? Uh, the project's already been designed. It is for construction. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you, sir. Anything else? Mr. That concludes staff report, sir. Okay. Thank you. So I'll entertain a motion to dispose of the first reading of Bill 3297. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3299. Oh, 3299. Is that correct? 77. Sorry, I'm on the wrong. Okay. Wrong page, sir. 3297 for an award of contract for the Silvertop Sanitary Sewer. Jumped ahead in my reading. <laughs> Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the uh, first reading of Bill 3297. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion carries 7 0. Can I please have the first reading of Bill 3299 by title only? The first reading of Bill 3299 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, authorizing amendment to the fiscal year 2017 capital budget. Thank you. Is there a staff report? Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask Mr. Kraft to make a staff report on this agenda item. Thank you, Mr. Fearborn, Mr. Mayor, members of council. <clears throat> As I mentioned during the previous staff report, staff is requesting a budget amendment in the amount of $9,247 to cover the additional funds for the uh, contract amount and to provide for a contingency. Thank you. Any questions of staff? If not, I'll entertain a motion to dispose of the first reading of Bill 3299. Mr. Mayor, this time I'll move to approve Bill 3299 for a budget amendment for the Silvertop Sanitary Sewer. Second. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the first reading of Bill 3299. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion carries 7-0. Uh, item D has been removed from the agenda this evening as previously communicated to the council and myself. Mr. Fearborn, do you want to uh, talk a little bit about that one? It's Just brief. very briefly, uh, after we had received the numbers, uh, as I had stated in my email, after we had received the uh, what Good Otis and the city believed to be final construction numbers for this, they realized that there was uh, an error in those numbers, uh, which in turn the trickle down is there's an error in the contingency numbers. We did not have, Mr. Otis did not have time to vet those numbers today. He received them over the weekend. I think it was late yesterday that he received the final numbers. Um, we would not have been able to vet the numbers before the council meeting tonight, and I would be very uncomfortable taking a number before the council that I felt was estimated. Um, uh, it, it's been a very good working relationship with them on this and doing this particular project and allowing us to do the reimbursement. So I want to be sure that everybody on both sides of this agreement is comfortable with the number coming before the council. And I know the council wants that number to be very accurate as well. Sure. Okay, well, we'll move on to item E then. Can I please have the first reading of Bill 3283 by title only? The first reading of Bill 3283 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, amending the fiscal year 2017 capital budget. Thank you. Is there a staff report? And is that number correct? 83? Uh, Uh, I, I uh, excuse me, sir, for just one moment. Sure. Uh, 
Mr. Fearborn? Yes. Yes. Um, I would ask Mr. Kras to uh, make the report on this agenda item. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Fearborn, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, in June of 2016, the city council approved resolution 1619, which amended the memorandum of under understanding for the Creekmore subdivision, which outlined maintenance responsibilities for the low pressure sewer system. Um, the change kind of clarified mate who was going to be responsible and within the chain of uh, the MOU now moving forward, the city of Raymore will accept what we are referring to as the public portion of the low pressure sewer system. That is strictly the pipe that all of the serv home service lines connect to. It's within our, typically within our right of way, just like a water main or a, a regular gravity sewer then has sewer lines or sewer services connected to it. Um, the original MOU contemplated some reimbursement to the uh, Creekmore developers as part of them maintaining the system. Uh, what we presented to uh, council as part of the uh, MOU is we never really came to terms on what a, what a good dollar amount would be annually, but we did look back and have determined that a one-time payment of $21,630.87 would take care of all the past maintenance activities that we would, they have done, and then we would accept the rest of it moving, moving forward. So this evening we are presenting a budget amendment uh, to you in that amount. Um, then just as we do with any public infrastructure, uh, staff would be presenting a, a resolution to you just like we do any other subdivision then accepting this uh, these facilities and then moving forward we would assume maintenance responsibilities for this and then any other low pressure sewer mains that are installed within the subdivision that concludes staff report okay. thank you mike any questions of staff if not i'll entertain a motion to dispose of the first reading of bill 3283 Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3283 for a budget amendment for the Creekmore Low Pressure Sewer Reimbursement. Second. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the first reading of Bill 3283. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion carries 7 0. Can I please have the first reading of Bill 3272 by title only? The first reading of Bill 3272 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, approving an agreement with Dana F. Cole and Company, LLP, to serve as the independent auditor for the city for a three year period. Sir, staff report. Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask Ms. Watson to make the staff report on this agenda item. Thank you, sir. Mayor and Council. Um, <coughs> staff issued a an RFQ for um, the services for an independent auditor to uh, provide the audit services for our fiscal uh, financial statements each year. Um, three firms responded to the request for services. Staff uh, did a review and independently uh, rated the qualifications of each of the applicants. Um, just to give you a brief overview, um, Dana F. Cole provided the uh, highest overall ranking of the staff reviews. They provided um, their proposed team, had the greatest uh, years of experience and uh, the most appropriate staff to cover our type of, of audit as well as um, the best approach based on um, the type of service that we requested through the qualifications. Um, just on a side note, the proposal uh, this year is for $28,000 uh, per year, which is a decrease of $4,000 um, over last year's, and that is uh, because they have done an outstanding job of training city staff to take over um, the creation of the CAFR, therefore the reduction of the audit expense each year. Great. Any questions? Mr. Burke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Are we sure that a, a firm with 102 years of experience is enough years for us to, to fully vet them? <laughs> Just kidding. Mr. Kellogg. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I know the, the agenda says that we've used them for the past three years. I'm kind of curious, um, what is best practices, um, if there is any, for how long we use a certain auditor for a certain amount of time? I realize we, we bid these out for three years, but there, 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 there comes a time, in, especially in not, not this community, but in other communities that I have to be aware of, that the relationship between an auditor and, and a financial staff can sometimes get a little too cozy and that you need new eyes on, on the thing. And that's my concern. I'm not, I'm not saying that's happening, but I want to prevent it from happening if it does have the chance. And that's the, the preface of my question. How, what is the best practice for the length of time that we use the same firm? Mr. Fearborn. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Watson and I have actually had extensive conversations about this. This will be the third three-year contract, and that will be long enough. And that's going to be our practice. Thank you. I do want to add one more comment, though. Yes, sir. Um, the staff that actually comes out and does the field work is different. So that does add another level of um, security for your issue on whether or not they truly are independent. Mr. Keller. I'll comment, I, and I appreciate that answer because that was gonna be my next my next question is that, is that does the staff of the firm change? You know, because that, sure. even though I'm not overly comfortable with that, but it, it, it there is a level of change of eyes is what I'm trying to say. So sure. I, I I'll, I'll leave that. it alone with that, but I thank you. Thank and, you. and a certain component of the issue that led to Sarbanes-Oxley, which is uh, what led to the reforms that are currently in place, was because the, in essence, the audit firm was coming out and writing the financials for those firms um, at, at our level. I mean, there were, there were bigger issues at stake, but when, when the auditors are coming out and have a close enough relationship with the staff that they're writing the financials for you and you're just simply going along with whatever is being said or giving them intimations of what should be being said, that's not good. Um, the, the point of where we have been able to get with Dana Cole is we had a good firm who came in and were very strict with us about saying, you need to get to a point where when we come in here, we are auditing all of the work that you all have done in putting the financials together and the management discussion and analysis together and the historical documentation together rather than us doing that ourselves. And how many, how many changes did they have to make this last year? The only, the only caution the council gets each year from our audit is where they are telling you we've still had to make a couple of changes relative to the debt service accounts or that, so they let you know those because some of those entries are extremely complex but uh, most most organizations that are being responsive to it and very sensitive to the auditor relationship are getting to where we are and one of the reasons we liked this firm is they were very stern with us in saying you need to get to the point where this is essentially a hands-off relationship. How many of the entries did we have this last audit? I am very proud to say Lisa had none. So we, in essence, wrote all the financials ourselves. Thank you, Sydney. Anyone else? Questions? Thank you. Therefore, I'll entertain a motion to dispose of the first reading of Bill 3272. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3272 for an award of contract for the city's auditor. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the first reading of Bill 3272. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Six yes. Is any no's? One no. Motion passes. Okay, please have the first reading of Bill 3296 by title only. 
The first reading of Bill 3296 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, amending the fiscal year 2017 operating budget. Thank you, is there a staff report? Yes, her call on Ms. Watson. Thank you, sir. Um, during the course of fiscal year 2017, four major line item uh, expenditures exceeded current expectations. Um, those items were utility locates associated with Google, uh, stormwater repairs associated with the uh, contract agreement with Cass County to correct uh, the stormwater issue out on School Road and Hubach Hill. Uh, water tap installations associated with the uh, wonderful expansion that we've had on our um, building permits and uh, solid waste fees also um, associated with the accelerated growth that we didn't project. Um, at this time, I'm also requesting uh, an additional transfer that was previously omitted with the communications department. Um, back in February, I believe, I brought a budget amendment to separate out the communications department from the administration department. And at that time, um, as you all know, we use program accounting. So I took the value that was associated with the program code for communications, and that was the value that I transferred out to the communications department. But um, there were various uh, items that uh, are communication oriented, for instance, the branding, that uh, were coded to the administration code rather than the communications code. So I am asking for the additional transfer to uh, make those things more appropriate. Uh, it makes it cleaner this year that it belongs in the communications department, and then it also makes it cleaner when we're doing the uh, monthly expense comparison where it shows uh, the communications department versus the prior year. Any questions? Mr. Moorhead. Ms. Watson, I know you just spent a good deal of time there on the communications part, but being that it's $73,000, could, could, when you say things like branding was coded to administration, can you give more specifics of what types of entries you're talking about that would equate to that? Um, well, there... I believe, I'm sorry, I didn't come totally prepared. Um, the $30,000 contract issue that was associated with branding um, was a significant part. But then there were also uh, miscellaneous things. Um, the review is coded to administration. Uh, a portion of um, Mike's assistant was coded to administration because it was covering uh, city functions as well as park rec parks and recreation functions. Um, so those those things just added up to a greater value. And, and you will note at the top of that particular item, it is literally just administration is being reduced by 73,000 and those are being transferred over to the 73,000 in the communications. As Ms. Watson indicated, it, we could have left them in administration, but you always want to account for something where it is most appropriate, where the people who are signing and asking for the purchase orders are coming from, so. Anything else? Thank you, Cindy, appreciate it. So I'll entertain a motion to dispose of the first reading of Bill 3296. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3296 for a budget amendment for the fiscal year 17 operating funds. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the first reading of Bill 3296. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion passes unanimously, thank you. Move on to the public comments section. So if anyone would like to address the council at this time, please come forward, identify yourself for the record, and keep your comments to a maximum of five minutes. If there are none, we'll move on to the mayor council communications. Mr. Kellogg, I'll start with you this evening, sir. I have nothing, sir. Thank you, though. Okay. Mr. Townsend. Thank you, sir. I have nothing to see. Mr. Burke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanted to talk about um, you know, of course, 9-11, um, I was in the school, I was on my plan period listening to the radio, and I thought at first it was a bit 
uh, from Johnny Dare, and I thought, well, this is not funny, what the heck. And then I listened, and then they were broadcasting from ABC. And um, rather than make the decision to let the administration know in the building, I went to the history department, and I told every teacher, stop what you're doing, turn the television on. And um, that may have made my, my boss unhappy, um, but at the middle school, they didn't give the children any information at all that day. And uh, I think uh, knowing that the people that some of them still live here that would be in their 30s at the time, at, at this time, that um, I, think, I think they definitely benefited from seeing what was happening as it was happening. And uh, I received a call this morning from, from the uh, first teacher that I went to that I coached with, and he called and, and thanked me for doing that. And he calls me every year about 8.30 and thanks me for that. But um, I just think it was, it was such an important time in our lives, and I think there are times that we need to, you know, definitely make a decision and do what's right for, for people in that moment. And uh, we certainly have a lot of things that are needing to be addressed right now with their two storms. So keep, keep people in mind. Mr. Moorhead. I'll start with staff uh, on the on my right, Mr. Crass. I thank you for answering my questions on the phases on 155th. I just know that a lot of us are are uh, thirsty to travel that way again and to hear that the bridge construction is moving forward and all that. That's fantastic, and and I'm excited about that. Uh, rolling the ball uh, uh, to to the left, Mr. Catarad. I passed along a statement to Mr. Fearborn last week and but I wanted to bring it up publicly, and that is a compliment to um, a member of your staff, Mr. Neal, who at times I have uh, always respectfully uh, um, offered constructive criticism that sometimes codes needs to be a little more aggressive. And Mr. Neal cited me a couple weeks ago as a member of the Silver Lake Home Association for the trees on Lucy Webb. And as I told Mr. Fearborn, Thank you, because that's exactly what I wanted, and I am not exempt of that. So I appreciate that, but please pass that along as a compliment. I, uh, I know that you guys do a lot with that, and I know that uh, the purpose of bringing this up publicly is the fact that we do take pride in the fact that our codes department, as I've dealt with and interacted in other cities, always doesn't always have a great relationship with the community, and ours seems to, and it's because of how respectful your department is is as well as trying to address the issue. So I wanted to pass that compliment along. And rolling over to Mr. Fearborn and, and Ms. Zimmerman, I must say, and this is for both of you, Mr. Fearborn, you know, earlier in the year, we adjusted the uh, employment tree and made some adjustments here. And you talked about changing roles of staff and and I recall you mentioning to me personally that you value staff and the role that that you want to step in their shoes and see how they all do things to to really understand this city. Well, Saturday morning, my wife happened to be at Eagle Glen dropping off some hazardous materials. And lo and behold, not just you, but Chief Zimmerman were the actual uh, crowd control officers in the street. Apparently you meant that literally, that you are going to literally be every role. Um, I'm teaching my son about uh, business and I made the comment to him that uh, about being the chief bo uh, cook and bottle washer, meaning you're the train engine, the caboose and every car in between. I now show you as an example of somebody who wants to literally do everything here in the city and Chief Sermon, you're enabling him. <laughs> so. And as a result of that, I do have to say, Mr. Mr. Fearborn, I believe, didn't we have a tow ordinance coming before us soon? Yes, sir. So I may make a recommendation to modify that here at the dais that if a red pickup truck is in the, dry, in the parking lot over the weekend, that it's a mandatory tow. <laughs> and with that, I'm done. Thank you very much. Ms. Abdelgawad. I thought you'd keep going. Oh. Down that way. You surprised me. 
Um, I just want to say that last week on Tuesday, Mr. Berenson and I got to hang out at the city table at the farmer's market, and that was a great experience. Staff did a wonderful job getting everything prepared for us. We had some goodies to pass out with the new Raymore City logo. It was a lot of fun to get to talk to people and hand out information about the household hazardous, wa hazardous waste event that was last weekend. We also handed out some information on the um, I don't remember the name, paint and sip, something like that, that the Arts Commission is doing. And it's just always great to have an opportunity to get out and talk to people. So I want to encourage anyone who didn't get to see us last week, and even those who did, to come back to the farmer's market this week, because my colleagues from Ward 3 will be there. Um, <laughs> so it's lots of fun at the farmer's market. Hopefully you'll get great weather like we did. Um, but thanks for staff for getting all that prepared, and it was, it was a great time. I also want to mention that Mr. Berenson and I are going to have a Ward 4 Town Hall meeting coming up in October, on October 18th. And we'll be meeting at Center View back here behind City Hall from 6.30 to 8.30. So I want to invite anybody from Ward 4 to come and visit us that night and find out what's going on in Ward 4 in Raymore and bring us your concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Barber. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just want to make a comment about 9-11. Uh, you know, I, it, that's one of those times um, that everybody can remember exactly what they were doing at that time. But one of the things, the, the takeaway from that too was, if you remember, the phone systems went down. And it was hard to make an outgoing call, even on a landline. And one of the reasons for that is, at that point, everybody was calling a loved one to check on them. And that, that's, that's always, every year, kind of stuck in my mind that, um, that everybody called, made sure their loved one was okay. And I think, you know, it's kind of a good time to recognize that. You know, don't just wait for something like that to happen. Make sure you pick up that phone and call your family or the people that you care most about. Um, so I do appreciate you taking time to, to recognize that. Um, yes, we will be at City Market, Ward 3. Thanks for mentioning that. And uh, we look forward to it. So come out and say hi to us. We don't want to just sit there by ourselves. And Jay's planning on making it. and. Uh, uh, I think it starts at four and I'll stay there until it ends and hopefully we do have some good weather. Um, I, I got an email and I, I noticed that, uh, and this is a comment towards Mr. Fairborn, but um, you, did you hire somebody this last week or do, do you have a, I, normally we hear about a new employee, but uh, um, did you get some help uh, for yourself? Um, City Hall now has a new receptionist greeter who is also uh, serving as an office assistant to the city manager, sir. Oh. And she, her name is uh, Miss Rachel Bratton, and she is, uh, her, her starting has been very, very good. Um, the, uh, uh, come on in and meet her. I actually have informed her that she is going to be required to come to the next council meeting. I didn't want to overwhelm her too much okay. in her first week here, but she will be uh, in here and I will be introducing her to the council at your next regular meeting. Well, I'll wait for my standing up and applauding till next week. So <laughs> thank you very much. Good job, city manager. <laughs> Mr. Holman. Thank you, sir. Um, Start off with, I want to uh, congratulate Mr. Barber. For those of you that don't know, his uh, daughter was the opening act at one of the major Branson shows this past weekend at the age of 12. Pretty impressive. Uh, one of our own makes good, and uh, starting off a career at age 12 is, is pretty impressive when you get uh, that kind of headline billing in a major. Uh, <laughs> isn't paid yet. You're waiting, right? But congratulations on that. Pass it on to Katie, please. Uh, we do have, if I count right, I think two American government students in the audience tonight. We had our first group at our last meeting. Um, thank you for being here. Um, normally what I do is kind of what I call the uh, Cliff's Notes version for you, but I've been watching you all take, hey, look, they're shaking the words around now. It's like, oh, Council Member Holman's going to tell us what we need to write. I've been watching you take notes. You've got the agenda. I think you've got a, a pretty good idea there. I'm going to take a little different tactic tonight. I want to show you how some of this stuff can apply to the general citizen because probably what you've listened to tonight sounds incredibly boring. We authorized payment for things, we changed uh, zoning designations or uh, made second reading on those kinds of things. But let's take, for example, um, item F, which is a water contract on stormwater improvements. 
sounds terribly boring when you hear us talk about that, right? And it is, big deal, so what? The storm didn't drain, the water didn't drain as fast, what do I care? Well, what do you care is when you run through the puddle and you don't see the curb and you bust your tire and it costs you 125 bucks to fix it, okay? Or what gets worse is, for the example, at the old McDonald's uh, entrance there before the city took that over and fixed it, that water sits there and collects, and what does water do to the pavement over time, Mr. Crass? It buckles it and alligators it and we've gotta fix and repair the road and spend a lot more money a lot more frequently. Until we fix the stormwater drain, that water's gone and we don't have those issues, right? Or let's take a much more serious and much more severe scenario as is occurring in Florida right now. If their stormwater improvements were 25% better in all of those cities that are underwater, that would be a huge difference to those cities, would it not, Mr. Grass? It, it still would be a disaster, but if, those, if that water could drain away more quickly, it would be much, much better for the citizens of the Houston area, the Eastern Texas area, as well as Florida, and points to the north. If you didn't watch TV tonight, now it's Atlanta that's in trouble, because simply because of the heavy rain that's falling, and that rain has to go somewhere. And if it doesn't go fast enough, it causes all kinds of problems. So you can take back that tidbit on that boring storm, stormwater improvement and tell people how that applies to you and to the city. Um, the second thing I have, Mr. Crass, thank you, sir. I sleep well at night because I know you take care of our streets and it is safe for my 16-year-old son in that capacity to drive, as well as my wife, as well as the rest of our 20,000 plus citizens. Um, I am a little concerned that if Coach Reed ever finds out how good a job you're doing, he will want to hire you as defensive coordinator. So <laughs> please stay put. The last thing that I have, a little bit more serious in nature. For those of you that weren't aware, we had an officer uh, in our police department. And, and when I say our police department, I'm not talking about the people up on this bench. I'm talking about all 20,000 people. We have an excellent, excellent police department and we are very fortunate to have them. One of our officers was injured this past weekend, wasn't it, Chief? In a uh, two vehicle collision out here at JN 58 Highway. It was a, uh, what's referred to as a T-bone or front end of a car into the side of the police car. It can be very serious. We were very fortunate in that, in that neither party was injured seriously. The officer was slightly injured. He was uh, treated and released at the hospital. And we should all be very, very grateful that it was not any more serious than it was. Um, I want to uh, extend my well wishes to the officer chief. I brought a card. Uh, the chief has it because I forgot it. I had my, had my son run it up here, but I would ask for the council to sign it if you would before we leave. We'll have the chief deliver it uh, to the officer. He has uh, been treated and released, still doing well. Is that correct, chief? Thank you. Uh, also, one other thing that I have to say, uh, imagine the moments of a collision where someone runs into the side of your car, that horrible impact and breaking glass at two items trying to occupy the same space at the same time at very high speeds. How many of you would have the presence of mind to immediately, and you've been injured, your heads hit the side glass, would have the presence of mind to get out of the car and go ask the other driver if he's okay, make sure he stays still until EMS personnel get there. That is the level of integrity and quality of our police officers here in Raymore. It's exactly what happened. That's all I have, sir. Thank you. Um, Margie, thank you for uh, all of your attention you gave to us tonight. You did a great job uh, getting through this agenda. It was a big agenda tonight, as you can tell, and we got through it in an appropriate time, almost an hour on that, top of that. And then as I started off the meeting tonight, and you know, we talked about 9-11, uh, and um, I hadn't been here very long as police chief. We were still in the old building on South Washington. Uh, when that occurred, a very intimate setting over there where we were all kind of sitting on each other's laps, as a matter of fact, uh, as tightly as we worked in that facility. Uh, but uh, what, what a lot of people don't know is that the day before that, I had taken over as commanding officer of my joint intelligence unit, and I had uh, the responsibility of 48 people whose lives all changed that Monday uh, when I had to start calling them and saying, you're being sent here, you're being sent there. It was a hard thing to do. And in fact, it was just within like the first 30 days of that, I had to deploy myself. So it was, uh, that was a, an interesting, I think what's most frustrating about what's happened since 9-11 is that we haven't gotten any further than we have, um, than where we are 16 years later. Uh, that global war on terrorism, I think, unfortunately, is embedded in our lives now, 
and it's just something we have to live with. But uh, that, that day affected a lot of people, and that's why I asked for the moment of silence uh, this evening. Um, the, uh, the country recognizes that, flags at half staff as well, and I appreciate that kind of patriotism. I appreciate that kind of, of um, dedication to government as well uh, from the members of this council that I have the, uh, the honor to serve with on a daily basis. And I appreciate you all um, uh, giving me that, uh, uh, that moment of silence there. So uh, with that, um, I think we'll close for the evening. Is there any reason to go into executive session? No, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn? Mr. Mayor, move to adjourn. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? <laughs> we are adjourned, 7-0.